So I will start straight away with the numbers because I, I think they speak for themselves. According to the uh, Joint United Nations Programme on HIV and AIDS, there are currently 37 million people living with HIV in the world. The HIV epidemic is a major health crisis and not one continent has been spared by the pandemic. And adults, like children, are to bear the, the, the burden of, of HIV. Uh, the, the battle against HIV is now in its fourth decade, and, and a lot, I have to say, a lot has been achieved since the discovery of HIV as a human retrovirus and as the uh, causative agent of AIDS back in the 80s. We, we now have a deep understanding about how HIV infects cells of our immune system, our white blood cells, the, the very same cells that a job is to protect our cells against a uh, pathogenic uh, attack. Uh, indeed, uh, HIV, inf if, if the infection is left untreated, uh, it's going to result in the destruction of our immune system, slowly but surely. And then this is the door open to attack from the outside, for door open to opportunistic infection. And that's the very definition of AIDS, for acquired immune deficiency uh, syndrome. One HIV act actually infects cells, the, the CD4 T cells, and by doing so, as soon as they enter the cells, they're going to hijack the cellular machinery and turn the cells into a factory for producing more viruses. So if you have one cell infected by one virus, this one will be forced to produce thousands of viruses, which then can infect as many cells. So, so you can see the picture. We have a good story, a good success story in HIV research, and this happened back in the 1996. Um, this was the advance of a combination, a cocktail of anti-HIV drugs called C-ART. This, this is for combination antiretroviral treatment. C-ART is highly efficient at suppressing viral replication in the blood below detection level, which gives a chance for our immune system to come back and, and recover. C-ART basically saves life. And people today, the one who have access to treatment, can then live positively. Uh, however, because there is always a but in these stories, uh, C-ART is not a cure. Indeed, if you stop treatment, and as soon as you stop treatment, viral replication resumes and should back up to level that actually preceded the treatment, and this within weeks. So the question is, where is this virus coming from? HIV has this capacity to remain silent inside latent reservoir and persist there. So this is just a very small pool of cells, uh, long-lived infected cells, where HIV remains latent, dormant. So from the outside, when you look at the cells, it's not visibly infected, but HIV resides there as a silent passenger, hidden from the immune system and otherwise highly effective drugs. So the real consequences of that is that we don't have a cure. And these latent reservoirs are the main obstacle to a cure. The consequences are that patients have to remain on this treatment for the rest of their life. And lifelong treatment don't go off without any consequences. These people have to live with very serious side effects and, and comorbidities. And that's a significant bur burden, bur burden on, on the individual but also on the healthcare system, uh, specifically in, in place in, in uh, resource limited settings where even having access to, to a treatment is, is a challenge uh, in itself. So we need uh, a cure. And clinicians and scientists working on HIV cure research program are aiming to develop new strategy to actually eliminate this very same uh, latent uh, reservoir. And we believe that the best way to do so is to actually force the virus to wake up, to, sh to force it out of latency back into an active stage again. However, and this is very important, while maintaining the patient under the drug that we know are working, and this is to protect the uninfected cells. 
That's the first phase. The second phase is then, because the cells are now visibly infected, the idea is then to redirect the immune system towards the specific infected cells so then they can destroy them and eliminate them. So that's a nice story, but, uh, and this is called the shock and kill strategy. But, but to achieve that, we need to know more. We need to know more about the m and if investigate further the molecular and the cellular mechanisms that are keeping the virus latent. And we need to know more about the nature of these cellular reservoirs because they're quite diverse and, and various. We need to know their location within the body and we need to find a way to identify them so then we can target them. Um. The next thing that is uh, important to know is that we know a little bit about this and, and part of HIV strategy is to actually, once it gets inside the cells, it's going to reach the nucleus, which is the place where we have our own genome, quite safe here. HIV is going to get there, it's going to cut the DNA and then insert its own genome, the viral genome inside it once embedded into this uh, our host genome, the cell's genome, the cell's chromosome, it can reside there forever, up to the end of the cell's life, which means that the cell is now irreversibly infected. This means that to eliminate the virus, we need to eliminate these cellular reservoirs. We have ways of doing this. We know that the, the way, uh, because it's inside the chromosome, the, 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 the viral gene are controlled, are silenced via mechanisms that are known as epigenetic mechanisms. These ones uh, are known in, in our cells to simply switch on and off genes to organize a specific cellular program and make a liver cell, a liver cell, a brain cell, a brain cell, or a blood cell, a blood cell. In the case of the latent reservoir, they actually maintain the virus silence. However, recent clinical trials have shown that if you just use agents against this epigenetic mechanism, this is not sufficient to reactivate uh, the virus and to eliminate the, the reservoir. This is simply because the nature of this reservoir is highly complex and the, the cause of the latency is multifactorial. So the only way to go about this is to try to have as many angles and as many perspectives about how this is working. And this is if we want to unveil the many layers that are keeping the virus silent and then collectively unlock all these blocks using multi-targeted approach. We cannot do that on our own. My, my, my lab cannot do that in our own, on our own. We have to really work in a collaborative way to really face this very uh, difficult and, and, and challenging problem if we want to, to achieve a cure. You would say, what do you mean by a cure? So at the moment, we have two types of cure insights. The first one is the sterilizing cure. That's a cure where we can effectively eradicate all the infected cells, all the, including the latent reservoir, and therefore wipe out the HIV from, from the patient. The other type of cure is called a functional cure. So here the aim is to actually try to reduce the latent reservoir to a size that would be manageable by the immune system on its own without the help of treatments. This will have two major consequences for the patients. First, they'll be out of drugs, which is great for them. And second of all, is that if we can succeed to keep the virus sufficiently low in the blood, so then it won't be able to be transmitted to someone else, whether between sexual partner or from mother to child. So that's a, that's a huge challenge. And you tell me, is this an attainable goal? Uh, and I believe yes, and others as well. Uh, we have examples already in life. Uh, in terms of a sterilizing cure, there is one an unique case which happened less than uh, 10 years ago and which is referred to as the Berlin patient. This patient, who was Timothy Ray Brown, was HIV positive and then was unfortunately diagnosed with a, a very aggressive form of leukemia. And his medical doctor, who was very smart and believed that the best way to, to save this uh, man's life was to do uh, a bone marrow transplant. And by selecting the donor, he also selected a donor that had a specific mutation that is known to stop the virus from infected blood cells. So basically what they did, which is a very drastic and, and, and a harsh 
way of, of treating patients. If you have first to kill all the uh, white blood cells in this individual and then replace them with these fresh cells which are uh, resistant to HIV. And since this man has been cleared of, of HIV, so that's, that's the first example. You would say uh, it's not something that can be applicable uh, on a large scale. It's, it's, ve it's very aggressive therapy, very expensive to put in place. And it's a bit far from what we want to do. But we take it as a proof of principle. It shows that, yes, it is possible to eradicate this latent reservoir. In terms of a functional cure, we have two groups of patients uh, that exist in the world. One who are called the elite controller. These people have been um, infected by HIV, but their immune system is able to manage to control the infection so that the virus level in the blood is very low, well below detection level. The other group of people are called the post-treatment controller. These individuals, just have been, after being exposed to the, to the virus, have been quickly diagnosed HIV positive and quickly put on antiretroviral therapy. After a few years, when they, they stopped the therapy, they realized that these individuals were able to control the virus without any further treatment with their own immune system. The common point between these two groups is that the latent reservoir is very small. And that's echo back to what we want to achieve as a, as a functional cure. So that's basically the, the big picture. And again, it's highly complex. And I have no doubt that we need to collaborate together. We need put to put together on the table our expertise, the tools that we can we use to study a little bit further the nature of this latent reservoir. And I want to take this opportunity to, to acknowledge uh, my, my collaborator here in Ireland, in Europe, and in Canada, and we're all working as part of a large consortium, and which is funded by the uh, European Union, the Horizon 2020. I also want to acknowledge uh, my group who is working back there in the Center for Research in Infectious Disease in UCD, and they're doing an amazing work. And also because this is very important, the, the, the funding agencies that are supporting uh, our work, the uh, Health Research Board and the uh, Irish uh, Research Council. So I just want to finish my talk by saying that, yes, we have very highly effective drugs to keep the virus under control. And, but this downside to it is that people have to have access to this treatment for the remaining of their life. And in terms of access to treatment, UNAIDS has just recently, uh, last first February, published new data showing that um, over 15 million of people in the world have access to this treatment. And that's a huge achievement in itself. But it means also that 22 million of them do not. So we need to find something more efficient for these people, uh, more on a short-term basis, something that can cure people um, having uh, HIV and living with HIV and AIDS um, at the moment. And this goes without saying, but uh, money is the nerve of war. So to win this battle, we need funding. We need specific funding for HIV cure research, and both at the international level, regional level, national level, so we can all work together and move forward uh, towards uh, an HIV cure. Thank you very much.